High School's Frank Williams Activity Center. It's the Anaheim High Boys semifinal game between the Dunbar Crimson Tide and the Cardozo Clerks. Hello again, everyone. I am Gary Williams. Welcome to Turning Point Video Productions continuing coverage of Inter High Basketball here on DCTV. We welcome our Prince George County viewers to tonight's ball game. We have a big game for you, an Inter High semifinal game between Dunbar and Cadozo. The third time they've met this year, and Dunbar has won both matchups. But the Cadozo Clerks in the second matchup, Seward Robinson, had a big ball game out of Martin North as well as Andre Harrison. Well, those are the key people for uh, Cardoza. If they're going to win tonight, they're going to have to get a big ball game out of Andre Harris. He's going to have to stay in the middle, fight the big people of Dunbar, and get his points also. Norris is going to have to direct the good point, point floor game and stay away from turnovers. Meanwhile, Coach Ken Howe, other commentator, Dunbar, has big games, of course, from Johnny Rhodes, James Marsh, and Roman Roach, who seem to be playing well at the right time. Exactly right, uh, Garrett. Romeo Roach, as we always say, is a catalyst for this ball club, and he's the key that gets Dunbar rolling. In other words, he gets them on in gear. And, and J uh, Johnny Rose and uh, Scoop Marshall uh, running the wings uh, do a fantastic job from the forward position. And with an excellent leaping ability, if Cardoza does not block them out well, it could be a long night. I'm expecting an exciting ball game and a good ball game. This is their third time around, and you know they always say, it is tough to beat a team three times in one season. But we'll see. Last year, these two teams met for the Inter High Championship, and in the Inter High Tournament last year, it became Romeo time as Romeo Roach was the MVP. That so here we go with the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visitors tonight, the Cadozo Clerks, 14-8 on the season. And they will start for Henry Lindsay's ball club. Number 11, Cornelius Lassiter. Lassiter, a 5'8 senior. And he'll play with number 15, Edward Williams, six foot senior. In the middle, Andre Harrison, 6'3 senior forward. Agent Richardson, number 32, is a 6'5 senior center. And, he, and the other guard will be Martin Norris, number 25, a six foot forward, a six foot two forward, but actually he'll probably run the show for the Cadozo Clerks. For Dunbar, number 10, Damon Singletary is in the ball game. He's a senior, as well as number 12, Roman Roach at the guards. The forwards of 15, Johnny Rhodes, a senior, and 21, James Marshall in the center, who has the basketball now, is James Washington, number 31. So Dunbar starts the basketball game. Mike McLeese's ball club. Singletary with a jumper. It's rebounded by James Washington. Washington goes up, and he scores. James Washington, he has to have a big game coming up the rest of the season for the Dunbar Crimson Tide. Well, he's been there three years, and he knows what it's all about. Actually, Washington has been a starter for almost three years. It's David Williams at the basketball. He'll find Cornelius Lassiter. That's inside. This is Richardson. Richardson pass. The fight that's picked off by Singletary. Singletary steps on the line and goes out of bounds. The officials for tonight's game are Pete Pinnell. He has the basketball now, and he's joined by Leroy Swain. We've seen both officials over the past two years on our broadcast for Turning Point Video Productions. In the high boys tournament semifinal, this is David Williams for three. The rebound is long, but back out to Williams. Williams finds Martin Norris for the jumper. Rebound to Richardson. Richardson defended by Marshall. They fight for it, and it goes into the hands of Johnny Rhodes. But Richardson steals it, and he scores, Adrian Richardson. Richardson had a big game in the last, in the first round matchup in the tournament. Cadoza beat Phelps 76-56, while Dunbar defeated Spingarn 77-54. This is Johnny Rhodes. 2-2 two two our score. 6.50 to go in the first quarter. Damon Singletary with a jumper. Count it. The underrated ball player on, on Dunbar's team. So it's 4-2 Dunbar. 6.40 to go in the first quarter. Glad to be with us. I'm Gary Williams. Along with Seward Robinson, Ken Howe, and Shelly Bowers Jr. Edward Williams on the drive. Rebound by Johnny Rhodes. Here comes Dunbar. Romeo Roach with the basketball. Roach drive. Back out to Rhodes. Off the glass and goes. So Johnny Rhodes, 6-2 our score. And the ball goes out of bounds and it will stay with Cardozo. I'm Gary Williams, Lawrence Lawrence Seward Robinson and Coach Ken Howe bringing you this ball game between Dunbar and Cardozo in a high boys tournament semifinal. The winner to play Coolidge in the finals. You'll have that game one week from today on the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, game time 4.30. So Coolidge will play the winner of this ball game. This is Martin Norris. Norris looking, finds Edward Williams. Williams inside to Richardson. Richardson goes up, off the glass, misses it, and a rebound by James Washington. 
James Washington, and uh, the foul is called underneath. So the ball, actually, the ball went out of bounds. It'll stay with Cadozo with 6.02 to go. Martin Norris inbounds, and a traveling violation called against Edward Williams. A correction, Cornelius Lassiter. They're trying to move that without the basketball, put it on the floor. So at 5.53 to go in the first quarter, Dunbar has the ball in a 6-2 lead. This is Johnny Rhodes. Inside to Andre Harrison. Harrison will find Martin Norris. The outlet, this is Edward Williams. Williams with a jumper, count it. So Edward Williams' first field goal makes it a 6-4 ball game with 6.32 to go in the first quarter. This is Romeo Roach. Roach brings it back out, man-to-man -man defense. This is Damon Singletary to Roach for three. Count it, Romeo Roach for three. Yeah, uh, we gotta call Romeo Roach Mr. Tournament because this gym's turned him on. Romeo Roach was the MVP of last year's in the high tournament and he and Johnny Rhodes will go to the Capital Classic team. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the broadcast. 9-4, score Dunbar five point lead. Those lose the ball out of bounds, but the Dunbar player touched it, and so Cadoz will hang on to the basketball. Cadoz will hang on to the basketball with 5.02 to go in the first quarter. Gary, on defense, Cadoz is playing a very interesting defense in the sense that they're picking Romeo up all over the court. Number 11, Lazister, is shadowing from end to end. So Cadoz are inbounds, 5.02 to go. Pass inside the fight that picked off by Damon Singletary. This is Romeo Roach. Roach finds Johnny Rhodes for the layup. Well, you can't do it any better than that on a break. That was a good uh, fast break uh, moving on Dunbar's part. Again, Romeo being the catalyst on the team. Got it going. 11 to 4, our score. Dunbar leads by 7. 4.45 to go, first quarter. Pass inside deflected. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Cadozo. So the defense really picking up for the Dunbar Crimson Tide so far in this first quarter, Coach Al. Yeah, it really is. What they're doing, though, they're, wherever the ball is, you generally find two men there. And that's what you call double teaming the, uh, where the ball is. James Berry checks into the game for the Dozo Clerks as the ball goes out of bounds. And it will go over to Dunbar. With 4.38 to go in the second, uh, first quarter of play, 11 to 4 out score. This is Damon Singletary. Inside Johnny Rhodes. Rhodes finds an opening and Hill will miss the shot. And comes out to Martin Norris. Here comes the Dunbar transfer. Martin Norris got it rejected and a goaltending call on James Marshall. He came out of nowhere to get that block. <laughs> yes, he really did. But that was a, that was goaltending. If that's goaltending in basketball, he definitely caught that one on the downward flight. But that was an excellent uh, play on Marshall's part. Otherwise, so give. Martin Norris, credit for the basket. His first points of the night, 11 to 6 our score with 4.22 to go. You know, as I watched that last, uh, the play uh, prior to that, was where Johnny Rose missed a shot on the right side of the basket. It goes back to the fact that although you're left-handed, you need to learn how to shoot with the right hand. He could have easily made that basket and shot with the right hand. So Dunbar inbounds, 4.20 to go. James Marshall brings it across. You'll find Damon Singletary to Johnny Rhodes down the baseline. Off the glass. Rebounded by Martin Norris. He got up high for that one. Ball stolen by James Berry. Comes Dunbar the other way. Here's Marshall. Marshall double team and he's fouled on the shot. Well, that's a new Scoop Marshall featuring a whole lot of move movement. Last year, Scoop weighed about 30 pounds more, and he couldn't move like that. He is trying to fill out into what he thinks he's going to be in college, and that's a good quick side forward. So that foul called on Edward Williams, his first and the first team foul for Cadoza in this ball game. Marshall for two, his first is good. 12 to six our score, 4-2 to go, first quarter. In the high boys tournament semifinals, second free throw is good. 13-6 our score, seven point lead for Dunbar and Romeo Roach is called for the foul. Roach is first. Ah, uh, that was a close one. I, I, I guess because Romeo was up under him is why he called that foul, but it didn't seem to be very much contact. Second team foul for Dunbar in this ball game. Four minutes ago exactly, 13-6 our score. Dunbar leads by seven. Cadozo has the basketball. This is Martin Norris. 2-1-2 zone by Dunbar. 
Hats inside. This is Harrison who finds Martin Norris. Misses the shot. Richardson tries the tip. And a rebound claimed by Johnny Rhodes. Here comes Dunbar. James Marshall. Pass over to Romeo Roach for the missed layup. Two Dunbar players crash for it. But Martin Norris comes down with it for Cadozo. Four and one the other way. And it's oh, tapped oh, deflected oh, by Johnny Rhodes. Lasseter deflects the shot. It's oh, tapped deflected. But Norris gets the loose ball. Here. Four and none to Adrian Richardson. So fast movement there. And that results in a two-pointer for Adrian Richardson. Four points on the night for Richardson. 13-8 our score. Dunbar's lead cut to five at 3.20 to go in the first quarter. This is Marshall. Marshall's foul. By, looks like, Adrian Richardson. You know, I'm impressed that uh, Cadoz is going after Dunbar man-to-man, which I think is a mistake. But we have to wait and see. They, so far, they've been playing very well with that man-to-man -man defense. So foul call on Richardson, his first and the second team foul for the Cadozo Clerks. Well, Coach Lindsay has been around a long time, and maybe he's scouted him and said there's something he can do with that man or at least play it for a while. I know he's shattering Romeo all over the place. Romeo's not in the ball game. Lorenzo Roach in the ball game, and Singletary's jumper is no good, and a rebound claimed by Martin Norris. The Norris will bring it across. Out to Kinez Lasseter. Three-pointers, no good. Rebound claimed by Norris. Aggression, that's uh, Williams. And foul call on Richardson goes to the shot. And it might be on Johnny Rhodes. No, Gretchen will be on Lorenzo Roach. For Roach, his first. And the scoreboard says three-team fouls. We only have two, but they are official. So we'll go with that. Three-team fouls for the Crimson Tide. As into the game for Cadozo is 44, Jermaine Gregory. Gregory is 6'4", senior. And into the game for Dunbar will be number 20. That's Sean Winfrey. And Winfrey is a 6'4 junior. So Richardson goes to the line. Two free throws. His first is no good. You know, Richardson's been playing very well uh, lately. In fact, he played very well in the first round, I understand, uh, our game last night. In fact, in that ball game, he had 18 points in the game against Phelps. Richardson misses both free throws. Rebound comes down to Dunbar. This is Damon Singletary bringing it across. Singletary will find Sean Winfrey. Back out now to Lorenzo Roach. Roach the sophomore, the brother of Romeo Roach. This is Johnny Rhodes on a nice move, but the shot deflected goes out of bounds. It will go over to Cool to Cadozo. Yeah, there again, he was able to block that shot because Johnny Rhodes is still shooting with the left hand. And he's on the side of the basket. If he could use his body to shield the defender, if he would use his right hand. And he'll learn that probably later on. Two and a half. Goes to a college. Two and a half to go. Second, uh, first quarter, 13-8 our score. This is Cornelius Lasseter. Lasseter finds Edward Williams. Williams over to Norris. Norris tries and gets fouled. So Martin Norris making things happen inside and draws the contact. Well, Mar Norris is a very quick player. He's playing at the forward, but he's in fact really a guard. So he uh, poses some interesting matchup problems for Dunbar. That foul called on 20, Sean Winfrey. For Winfrey, his first and the fourth team foul for the Crimson Tide. So Martin Norris goes to the line. Norris, the transfer from Dunbar Senior High School in his junior season. First free throw is good. Norris makes it 13-9 our score. Four point lead for Dunbar. Romeo Roach back into the ball game, number 12. Also Nathan Langley, who had an excellent game against Hawker Prep. Langley just a sophomore. Number 22, 6'2 sophomore. This is Norris with the second free throw. 13-10 our score. Three point lead. 2.14 to go in the first quarter. This is Romeo Roach. Ran across for Dunbar. Pass inside. This is Marshall. Marshall all the way. Rebounded by Winfrey. Winfrey loses it. Here comes Edward Williams for Cadozo. Williams all the way, and he will miss the shot. They fight for it, and Nathan Langley comes down with it for Dunbar. He saves it to Johnny Rhodes, who finds Romeo Roach, and Roach is fouled by Cornelius Lasseter. For Lasseter, his first 13 foul. Well, Lasseter's going to be here wherever Romeo Roach is. He, that's his job tonight. He's, he's shadowing all the way. Uh, the minute he leaves the bench. So they kind of feel that if they can disrupt Romeo, maybe you can disrupt Dunbar. 
So at 1.50 to go, Dumbo will have the ball and a three-point lead. There's Roach to find Johnny Rhodes. Rhodes inside, finds Sean Winfrey. Winfrey gets fouled, looks like by Adrian Richardson. We'll see on that one. It was indeed Adrian Richardson for Richardson. That's his second and a fourth team foul for the Clerks in this ball game. In this first half, I should say. Well, Coach Lindsey, as I say, he's been here before. He was here last year with a very great uh, Cardoza team, and the only team they couldn't beat in the city uh, twice was Dunbar, and he knows how to win. So if he can stay in this ball game close uh, and we get to the fourth quarter, we might see something very interesting. So Winfrey goes to the line, hits the first free throw. 14-10 our score. Back in for Cardozo is Andre Harrison, number 40. And Winfrey will go back to the line for a second of two free throws. 14-10 our score. Second free throw by Dunbar. Sean Winfrey is good. 15-10 our score. Dunbar 4-4 for the line. And they steal the pass. This is Winfrey. Winfrey goes up. Missed the shot. And they're scrambling for it there. And Martin Norris comes up with it for Cardozo. This is the outlet. As inside this is Avery Williams who missed the shot and Marshall claims the rebound. Oh, the outlet, Johnny Rhodes will beat Adrian Richardson to it. And he loses it. Langley had it to Winfrey. And Winfrey's fouled by a C. Looks like maybe Edward Williams on the foul. Yeah, I was wondering whether the foul was going to be called anytime soon. Stuff was getting kind of ragged at one point. Uh, but uh, see our uh, official uh, Swain, I believe, or Swan, called that foul. That foul call and Edward Williams his second. We have over the limit for for Cardozo, and they are indeed over the limit. One on one situation for the Dunbar Crimson Tide. So both teams now over the limit in foul. Computer. No direction. Fourteen fouls for for Dunbar. Well, the computer's not always wrong. The special idols. <laughs> Don't time. So here comes Sean Winfrey for one on one situation. Fifteen ten. Our score. One nineteen to go. First quarter. Rito is no good. Rebound by Andre Harrison. As we give to Martin Norris, he'll set it up at 1.14 to go in the first quarter. They're going to keep missing these free throws. Edward Williams to Andre Harrison. Harrison gets it deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with the Cadozo Clerks. 1.06 to go. Second, uh, first quarter. 15-10 our score. Andre Harrison finds Martin Norris. He'll set it up again. Man-to-man -man defense. Pass stolen by Johnny Rhodes. This is Langley to Rhodes. All the way for the layup, and he will score. So the fast break started by the steal from Johnny Rhodes, who has six points on the night. Most excellent ball movement on both of those young men part. 17-10 our score. 44 seconds to go, second, uh, first quarter. I'll get this quarter right eventually. And Romeo Roach called for the foul. And for Romeo Roach, that's his second. But they're going to have to be very careful. Again, Romeo is an integral part of that team, and especially in the third and fourth quarter. So Damon Singletary and Lorenzo Roach will come back into the ball game. They'll place Romeo Roach and Johnny Rhodes for Michael McLeese's ball club. Romeo Roach with two fouls on the night. Both teams now over the limit. That will send Edward Williams to the line for a one in one situation. Well, we've watched both of these teams all year, and both coaches have substituted pretty liberally, getting young players in and sophomores and so on. And so now we have sophomores and Langley and Roach coming in, and they're going to have to spell the seniors. So uh, all this thing that uh, Coach McLeese and Coach Lindsay have been substituted all year long, now is when it pays off. you got some sophomores and some juniors who really know how to play the ball game. They've been in good situations. They've been in hockey against the hockey preps. They've been against the Dunbars and so on. They know how to play the ball game, so this is nothing new for them now. Jermaine Gregory called for the foul. His first. James Marshall goes to the line one-on-one -on -one situation. 40 seconds to go. Marshall missed the free throw. Rebounded by Winfrey. It'll go to Singletary. Now bring it back out. This is Lorenzo Roach to Nathan Langley. A swing it to James Marshall. Marshall with the leading jumper. It's rebounded out to Martin Norris. Here comes Cadozo. Two on one. Norris. All the way. And he oh, scores. Yeah. Martin Norris. They call him Mucci. Yeah. He has six points on the night. That was a nice look off uh, uh, move. So 17-12 our score. 13 seconds to go. Let's see if Dunbar sits up for one. Here's Lorenzo Roach with nine seconds. Roach driving all the way. He missed the shot. Pass the 
and into the hands of Andre Harris with two seconds. Norris with one. His shot is no good at the buzzer. So at the one quarter of the Inner High Boys Tournament Semifinal, the winner of the play Coolidge, it's Dunbar 17 and Cadozo 12. Well, Cadozo seems as if they've come in with a new attitude, if I can use that expression, uh, Gary, because it seems like they're going, they're, they have nothing to lose, you know, because they know that uh, Dunbar is going to the city title game, so they're just going for it. And this is a good example of uh, going after each other. So they're playing a good ball game at this point. Well, Coach Lindsey, he's been here before, and I think his, his strategy is if he can stay close through uh, at least his first half and then into the third quarter, the fourth quarter, we're going to see him pull the Henry Lindsey uh, uh, tactics to win. And Henry Lindsey is a very good coach, as he proved in the Capitol Classic last year, among other things. And I don't say, mean to say one game proves you're a good coach, but he's been around for a good while. Well, speaking of the Capitol Classic, the upcoming Capitol Classic game, the 18th anniversary game, will be on March 27th at the Capitol Center, and the Inner High will have three representatives in that game. You're looking at two of them tonight, and Romeo Roach and Johnny Rhodes. The other Inner High representative will be John Stuckey of Coolidge High School, and the coach of the team will be Joe Gallagher, who, will be, who is finishing up his coaching career after 44 years of coaching at St. John's College High School. And St. John's and Good Counsel are fighting as we tape this game for the right to meet the Constellation uh, representative from the inner high in the city title game. Dunbar will play the Matha Senior High School in the championship game. He'll have that game right, both games actually, right here on DCTV. Lorenzo Roach makes the steal off the pass, and she'll he'll take it all the way, gives it to Damon Singletary off the glass. That was a, that was a beautiful. El Jabelle would love to see that shot. That was one of his favorites, shooting it off the glass, bank, bank shot. 19-12 our score, 7.30 to go in the second quarter. Cadoza has the ball, 25 is Martin Norris, 15 Edward Williams, 11 is Cornelius Lasser, 44 is Jermaine Gregory, and 40 is Andre Harrison. We'll give you Dunbar starting lineup when they get the ball, and they'll have the ball now as Cadoza goes out of bounds. 15, Johnny Rhodes, 21 is James Marshall, 22, Nathan Langley, 11 is Lorenzo Roach, and 10 is Damon Singletary. This is Johnny Rhodes bringing it across. He will find Lorenzo Roach, who loses the ball. Here comes Martin Norris for Cadozo. Norris, through traffic, all the way, and he'll score. Martin Norris with eight points on the night. Makes you wonder, he was at Dunbar last year. <laughs> 19-14 our score. Cadoza cuts the lead to five with 6.48 to go. This is Johnny Rhodes off the glass and good. So everybody using the glass tonight. Eight points on the night for Johnny Rhodes. 21-14 our score. You know, Johnny Rhodes is an awesome basketball player. If he ever develops his right hand, he's going to be even more awesome than he is today. Jermaine Gregory scores his first bucket. 21-16 our score. 6.26 to go and counting in the second quarter. This is Damon Singletary. He'll find Nathan Langley. Marshall. Pass intended for Marshall. The ball will go, let's see, it will go over to Dunbar. <laughs> Substitutions now. First for Cadozo. It's 24. That's Donald Struthers. Struthers is a 6'2 junior. 6'2 senior, excuse me. We'll try to get the Dunbar substitution. Big James Washington. James Washington back in the senior. Johnny Rhodes for three. Shot into the hands of James Marshall, but Mar Martin Norris picks it up. Here comes Norris. Norris falling away off the oh, glass. Great smoke. shot by Martin Norris. There's 10 points. That young man's off to an excellent start. See, Roy. He has been very, very well the last half of the season. This is Lorenzo Roach. Roach with the jumper. Rebounded by Donald Struthers. He'll give it to Martin Norris. A three-point lead for Dunbar. And Norris making things happen out there. Donald Struthers loses the ball out of bounds, but it stays with Cadozo. And Martin Norris getting a nice hand from the crowd here. Oh, he's he bringing him to his feet, but he's, he's really, he's got to spark this team. Here's Norris again. He'll give it inside to Richardson. That's put it in. It's tied up. And it will go. Let's see. It'll go to Dunbar in the alternate possession as James Washington and Adrian Richardson, a question that's Andre Harrison going for the ball. Tough play as Cornelius Lassiter back into the game for the Cadozo Clerks. 5.36 to go in the third in the second quarter. 21-18 our score. Dunbar leads by three. And they've quietly worked their way back into the three, to, uh, to being close by three. 
That's it, James Washington, who's fouled. Jermaine Clark in the ball game for Dunbar, number 13. Let's see what that foul is called on. It was on number 44, Jermaine Gregory, for Gregory, his second. Both teams over the limit. James Washington goes to the line. Well, I'm going to tell you something probably people don't realize. Uh, James Washington has started for Dunbar three straight years. Washington's free throw. It's off the glass and good. So again, everybody seems to be using the glass in this ball game tonight. With 5.24 to go. 22-18 our score. That's what they teach you in some cases. You know, coaches teach you to use the glass if the opportunity presents itself. Second free throw again off the glass by Washington. <laughs> I don't know about that guy. I don't know free throws, I'm not sure. This is Williams with a nice pass into Gregory, but he missed the shot. And the pass stolen. This is Struthers with the layup. Goes out of bounds, it will go to Cadozo. With 5-12 to go in the second quarter, 23-18 our score. Well, this is a Cadozo team certainly continues the tradition of some fine athletes that's just as we saw last year. They all could run and jump last year, and they can do the same thing this year. This is Jermaine Gregory. Gregory rebounded by James Marshall. One difference in the Cadozo team from earlier in the season when we saw him play Woodson, they're a much faster team with Martin Norris on the court. He wasn't there when they played Woodson here on DC TV. As Andre Harrison makes the steal, he'll give the Martin Norris. Here he comes, and he missed the shot. Rebounded to James Washington, and Washington's calling for traveling. Oh, I tell you, Martin Norris has brought this crowd to his feet. And they put the crowd in the game a little bit for them, uh, for, excuse me, for Cadoza, and that make a difference. Donald Struthers inbounds. It's Harrison out to Martin Norris. Over to Lassiter. Lassiter double team. Pass picked off, but then back into the hands of Norris. Here he Washington. comes. Norris probably no look pass, but it's thrown by James Washington. He'll give the Damon Singletary. Should be bringing it back out. If you don't have nothing, bring it back. Four and a half to go. Dunbar up by five, 23-18. This is Rhodes. Rhodes at the Singletary. Singletary for the jumper. Rebounded by Gregory, but Gregory loses it. And James Marshall does a nice job to knock the ball off the foot of Gregory, and Dunbar retains possession. Well, Scoop Marshall, he hustles all the time. Uh, with that new body, I tell you, he gets me moves around. <laughs> so Johnny Rhodes inbounds. They give the Singletary back to Rhodes. Nice swing across. Jermaine Clark over to Marshall. Pass inside deflected, but into the hands of Singletary. Over to Marshall. Marshall driving. He gets fouled, and the basket's no good. So James Marshall again driving toward the basket. And he draws the contact on the play with 4-3 to go in the second quarter. He always makes things happen when he's in that paint area. He either draws the foul or gets a three-point play. But any time he gets the ball in the paint area, he's most dangerous. That foul call on Donald Struthers, his first, number 24 for Cadozo. 4 three to go. James Marshall at the line for two free throws. Again, the story of the free throws will always be a big one. Marshall makes the first. 24-18 our score. Nathan Langley takes back into the game for Dunbar. Into the game for Cadozo, 15, Edward Williams. Now, watching Marshall at the line, you got, I can remember that he was three years ago, or two, yes, three years ago, he was a sophomore at Anacostia High School, and he played his 10th grade year at Anacostia. So he has matured very well. Second free throw by Marshall's no good. Gregory claims the rebound. And Martin Norris brings it back up. Under four minutes to go. 24-18 our score in the Inner High Boys Tournament Semifinal. The winner of this game will play Coolidge one week from today here on DCTV Channel 34. This is Struthers. Struthers with a jumper. Rebounded by Marshall. Marshall brings it across. He'll find Lorenzo Roach back into the game. Over to Marshall. Marshall driving all the way off the glass. In the paint area again. Five points for James Marshall. 26-18 our score. 3 27 to go. Second quarter. This is Williams. Williams finds the room. Gets fouled on the shot. Let's see who Pete Pinnell calls that foul on. It'll be on Nathan Langley. For Langley, his first. Both teams over the limit, but it'll be a two-shot foul for Edward Williams. Williams, a 6'1 senior swingman. Play the guard or forward. 
Williams free throw is good. So 19 our score. So far tonight, we haven't seen Greg Jones from Cardoza. Sometimes Coach Lindsey will put him in and sort of change the game around because Gregory Jones is a 10th grader, but he is a good ball player. Last time they played Dunbar, Gregory Jones had three three-pointers in the fourth quarter of that game. Rebound off the second free throw by Damon Singletary. 3.17 to go, second quarter. Dunbar 26 and Cardozo 19. This is Langley, finds Lorenzo Roach for three. Count it. Lorenzo Roach, three-pointer. Well, I got two more years to say Roach, it seems. <laughs> it's now a 10-point lead for Dunbar, 29-19, as we pass the three-minute mark in the second quarter. This is Martin Norris. Norris finding some room, and he'll score, Martin Norris. But well, see, that's the reason we haven't seen Jones yet because Norris is making so many things happen on that floor. But I'm sure before the night is over, we will see Jones, Greg with Jones. Double header, uh, double figures tonight for, for Martin Norris as Dunbar throws the ball out of bounds. And Cadoza gets it back with 2.36 to go, second quarter. This is Martin Norris bringing it across. Norris with 10 points on the night in this half. Donald Struthers. To Norris. Norris looking. Can't find anything he'll give Edward Williams. Williams with a jump. No, he'll pass it inside, and the shot is no good, but a foul is called. It's a nice pass from Edward Williams to driving Donald Struthers. Well, that's that patented Condoza ball movement. Uh, very quick leapers and very quick athletes, and they haven't moved the ball off. They had a perfect shot, but it did not go. So that foul called on 15 for Dunbar. Johnny Rhodes for Rhodes, his first. That will send Donald Struthers to the line for two free throws. First free throw attempts of the evening for the 6-2 senior. 3.18 to go, second quarter. Struthers makes the first free throw. 29-22, the lead cut to seven. And Struthers can cut the lead to six if he hits a free throw here. Second free throw is no good, but Harrison gets the rebound. Misses the shot. This is Gregory, and Gregory is called for traveling. Oh, that, that hurt. That hurt. That would have put him in within seven points. That really hurt. Coming up as we take this game, we'll have the boys' city title game for you between Dunbar and DeMatha. We're scheduled to have the coach of DeMatha, Morgan Wooten, at halftime in the ball game. As Damon Singletary is a two-pointer for his six-pointer tonight. 31-22, under two minutes to go, second quarter. This is Martin Norris, he'll walk it up. Here's Edward Williams, 2-1-2 zone by Dunbar. Williams goes up, and he will score. Edward Williams, his second field goal, giving five points on the night. 31-24, our score, 139 to go, second quarter. Well, these seniors are playing hard out here because, you know, number one, we say there's no consolation game, uh, based on what I've gathered. So th this could be some of my last game. Singletary for three and a rebound to Edward Williams. Williams is fouled. Uh, looks like Lorenzo Roach. Don't forget we'll have the girls in a high championship final be Coolidge and Woodson, H.D. Woodson, on March 13th, game time, 8 o'clock. That'll be this coming Wednesday night. As we know, Coolidge will go to the championship game and they'll face the O'Connell Lady Knights, that's the Finney Twins, Christy and Kathy. And H.D. Woodson, meanwhile, will play Elizabeth Seton. So reverse from last year's city title when Woodson played O'Connell and Coolidge played Seton. <laughs> Edward Williams with the free throw off the one-on-one -one situation. 31-25 our score, 123 to go, second quarter. But a sweep would still be nice, either way they reverse it. Second free throw is no good, rebounded by Harrison. Harrison goes up. Rebounded by Johnny Rose. Let's see. It was a foul call. Looks like it might have been. That foul could be on Johnny Rose. If it's on Rose, that's his second. But you know, I never worry about Johnny Rose in foul trouble. I've seen him with four fouls uh, several times this year. Hawker Prep, another game. And he just seemed to play so smartly with four fouls. So Andre Harrison will go to the line. One-on-one -on -one situation here. His free throw is good. In the first round game for Cadozo against Phelps in the second half, Cadozo hit their last 12 free throws. They started off shaky in that game, but in the second half, they really caught fire and they got out to that 20-point victory over Phelps in the first round. Well, second free throw by Harrison, no good. 
Well, Gary, you say that as if you doubt our wisdom here. We've been telling you all along the name of the ball game is free throw. No question about it. This is Jermaine. This is the uh, Lorenzo Roach. It's Nathan Langley. And Langley's shot rejected by Donald Struthers. But the foul may have been called on Donald Struthers. And meanwhile, Martin Norris slow to get up for Cadozo. And there was a big collision out front, Gary. I think he ran into someone. That collision came away from the basketball. I don't think we got it on, on you, but apparently Norris collided with one of the opposing players. He's slow to get up. And he could have to stay out for a length of time. That could be a big loss for the Cadozo clerks. Exactly right, because he has he has been that spark plug this, uh, in the second quarter, which has kept him this close. I hope it's nothing serious because as I always say, I never like to see any of these athletes uh, get hurt at any level. Once again, remind you, the girls in the high final, Coolidge and H.D. Woodson, Sunday afternoon. A question, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock on March 13th. The boys in the high final, that match Coolidge against either one of these two teams, Dunbar or Cadozo. That'll be next, next Sunday. Game time is 4.30 right here on DCTV Channel 34. Martin Norris is getting up. And he seems to be walking under his own power, so he seems to be in decent shape. Now he holds up a little bit. And still to come, we have the girls' city title consolation game from the DeForest Center at Catholic University. That'll match the H.D. Woodson Lady Warriors against the Seton Roadrunners. That's Lena Patterson, who put on a great show in last year's city title consolation game against Coolidge. She and Alfreda Jefferson went head-to-head -head in that ball game. You'll see Lena Patterson, who's having another great season for Seton, against H.D. Woodson, Jamil Elliott, Dawn Stewart, and the rest of the Lady Warriors. That game will originate from Catholic University, the girls' city title consolation game, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock on March the 20th. Well, Felicia Olive being out front for Woodson, it really, again, should be a great matchup from the point. So you got Keanu Oliver for Woodson and Lena Patterson's time for Seton in that ball game. Nathan Langley's free throw is good. Did I call her Felicia? Excuse me. Felicia Oliver. Oliver. Felicia Oliver plays for, of course, Howard University. There it is. <laughs> and Keanu Oliver did a great job in the game against Christ the King we had earlier. I got Oliver right. Two free throws by Nathan Langley makes it 33 to 26, a seven point lead. This is David Williams, he'll find Harrison. Harrison loses the ball and it's picked up by Damon Singletary. He'll bring it across. Under a minute to go. Nathan Langley rebounded by Sean Winfrey. Winfrey gets, gets stripped into the hands of Edward Williams. He and Langley try to chase it down. Langley came up with it, and he does come up with it. Here comes Dunbar, four and three. Langley finds James Marshall. Marshall finds an opening, and he scores. That's his area. He likes to come toward you, and then all of a sudden he's around you. That new body will do it every time. Seven points for James Marshall. 27 seconds to go. 35-26 our score. Back up to a nine-point lead for Dunbar. This is Struthers. He'll find Harrison. Out to Cornelius Lasseter. They swing it to Williams. Williams is fouled by Lorenzo Roach. That's on Roach. That's his second. So the Roach brothers, both Lorenzo and Romeo, each with two fouls tonight. But they've got ten fouls in the family. So uh, I think the important one is Lorenzo can give his five, but Lor Lor Romeo better not. So Jermaine Clark checks back into the ball game for Dunbar, replacing Lorenzo Roach. Well, see, this is what I'm doing a lot of uh, substituting during the early part of the season will do for your team uh, when it gets to crunch time. And I call crunch time any time from playoffs to city championship. And that's what Coach uh, McLeese is getting out of his ball players at this point. And that's a good move to take Roach out with 14 seconds to go in the half. Not miss him getting the third foul. Eric Williams makes the first free throw. 35-27 on score. Second free throw is good in there. That's the old kind of a roll. It was Williams, four and six, four of six from the line. 35 28 with 10 seconds to go. This is uh -huh. Jermaine Clark. Clark finds Singletary at five seconds. Out to Nathan Langley, three pointer. Rebounded by Winfrey. And it goes off at the buzzer. So after one half a play in a boys in a high tournament semifinal, it's the Dunbar Crimson Tide, 35, and the Cadozo Clerks, 28. Oh, we're going to be in for. A uh, good ball game if this continues the way it is because Coolidge, Coolidge, oh, excuse me, we're at Coolidge, aren't we? Dunbar 
is playing good basketball, but Cardoza is not giving up not one iota. They're playing very well also. So this could go down to the wire, this particular ball game. So we're looking for an exciting uh, second half. Gary, so with the scoring totals coming up here, first for the Cardozo Clerks, eight points out of Edward Williams. We have one point for Donald Struthers, 12 points for Martin Norris. Boy, he was shaking up a little bit early on. Hope he can come back and play in the game. One point for Andre Harrison, four points for Adrian Richardson, two points for Jermaine Gregory. Six points out of Damon Singletary for Dunbar, three points for Lorenzo Roach, three out of Romeo Roach, eight for Johnny Rhodes. We have seven points for James Marshall, two for Nathan Langley, and four for James Washington. As we talked about earlier, we'll have the Boys City Title Constellation game here on DigiTV Channel 34. That'll be on March, March 28th, game time, 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. We'll also have the Boys City Title game coming up for you on April the 1st, game time, 4.30, it's a Sunday afternoon. That game will match for the second consecutive year. The Dunbar Crimson Tide against the Damatha Stags. The Damatha Stags undefeated on the year. And joining us right now is the head coach of the Damatha Stags, Morgan Wooten. And coach, thank you for joining us. What are, you, what are your your um, thoughts on the first half so far in this ball game? Well, it's, it's a good ball game. I think that, uh, you know, Cardoz is playing very, very well. But I think Dunbar has one of their typically fine ball clubs. Uh, very nice balance. Uh, it's tough to figure out who to spot up on. And, uh, it's just another real good Dunbar ball club. Do you see a difference from this year's team as opposed to last year's team in the ball? Well, of course, Michael Smith is gone, and that makes a big difference inside. And yet maybe their perimeter game's even a little bit better. Uh, they've got excellent outside shooters. You look at Singletary, and uh, you look at Rhodes, and you look at Marshall, and they got guys off the bench that are willing to shoot the three. They seem to be even more of a threat outside than they were a year ago, if that's possible. Talk about your ball club. You once said, or it was quoted that you said that the Damatha Stags this year are, are as deep a team as you've had in a long time. Talk about the deepness of your ball club. Well, it is. I think uh, we don't have any one star, so to say, or a, a go-to guy, but we can go about 10 deep and we don't seem to lose anything. So we do have very, very good depth and uh, we're sure going to need it because I think Dunbar's got very good depth also. Let's go over to Seawar Robinson. Seawar? Well, Coach, uh, last year you, you said uh, you felt like your team stumbled into the uh, city title game. And I don't know whether you meant that or not, but you knew that you said you went in the game as an underdog. How do you feel you're going into this year? Well, this year I, I think we're in a little bit better shape. Uh, we clearly led our league from the very beginning and uh, led all the way. And, uh, and I think obviously we're the best team in the Metro this year. A year ago, I'm not so sure that was true. For the first month and a half, I think Gonzaga and Carroll were better ball clubs than we were. We just happened to get hot at the right time a year ago. So uh, this year, though, we there's been no question that we were going to get there, I think, all the way. And you got to look at Dunbar. I don't think there's been any question that they're going to be there all the way, too. And so um, I'm looking for another great ball game out there on Sunday. Well, last year, uh, we would watch you... Uh you said you had uh, a team that you figured was the underdog, and you attempted to control the tempo, and you did a very good job for that, bringing it down to the, the la one last shot, and unfortunately it didn't go. Uh, how do you feel like you'll be able to compete this year against them? Well, again, I think tempo is going to be a big key because um, you know Dunbar does play the full court game so well. Uh, they're not doing as much of it tonight because I guess they're saving a little bit for Sunday, but they love to press and to trap, and they get an up-tempo game going. And if you start playing that kind of game with them, I think you're in trouble. Uh, we want to run some if it's there, obviously, but we'd like to make it a little bit more of a half-court game if we can. Well, being the preeminent coach in high school basketball, I think, in America, uh, we've got a young gun over there. He says he loves to play your Mike McLeese. Uh, I think I see a little bit of Mike McLeese in you in the sense that he uh, stresses college for his program. And for years now, I've heard that all the math ball players go to college. Well, we've been very successful for the past 30 years. All our kids have gone on to college, and uh, and they're all doing well. But, hey, my hat's off to Mike. I think an emerging uh, young coach here who's really a great one. He's an outstanding fundamentalist. His kids are very, very sound, and I think he's uh, stressing the development of the complete student-athlete, not just the athlete, but the student-athlete. And uh, I like his class. I like his style. And... Uh, it's a lot of fun to coach against him because he's a real gentleman and his, his team, uh, I think, reflects the way he acts. 
Well, he's a young man, and he told me very definitely last year that coaching against you and winning was one of the highlights of his, of his young life. Uh, he also says that he plays a national program, and he wants to play a national program, and you have been doing that for years. Uh, there's some people who look at Hawker Prep and other people, and they have some divergent opinions about that. Can you tell us how you feel? Well, I think there's a big difference. You look at, uh, uh, for example, Dunbar, DeMatha, uh, we play a national program. I think it gives our kids great exposure. It gives them a chance to go on to um, at a college. A lot of college coaches see them and so on. And yet I think um, Parker Prep's a little bit different because uh, their players come from a much wider geographical um, area than either, say, Dunbar or DeMatha. Uh, there's Steve Hutter does a great job out there at Harker Prep. Uh, he's got, like, I think his best big man is from Europe. And so they've got, you know, a wider range they draw from. But he, uh, Stu's a great coach. He does a great job. I just think their program's a little different than, say, the programs in the inner high or the Metro League. Well, as usual, uh, have you uh, been uh, watching any of the junior high school talent around Washington? Do you think any of it's coming your way? Well, we seem to always get our share. And I think when you... Uh, have the tradition of a winning program and your kids going on to college it's only natural that you're going to get your fair share of good guys and I think that's what's happened with Mike over here at Dunbar that the kids want to go also and play for him because they see a chance to go on to college and to, and to further their career and, and let basketball help them down the road of life. I want to thank you for what is it now 30, 30 years is that it? Actually 35th year I'm wrapping up. 35th year and uh, you finally retired Joe Gallagher. Well, it is going to be the same next year with uh, Joe uh, not being on the sidelines. He was a dean of area coaches, uh, coached for 44 years, and, and to see him go, it's really like back when I think Frank Bolden finally stepped down. And you see some of these legends step down, it's not the same, but hey, you know what? you got the Mike McLe uh, McLeases and guys like that coming up, and D.C. basketball will continue to be as great as ever. Well, thank you for all the enjoyment over the years, and back to Gary. One final question, Coach Wooten. I know at one point I was a student at your Metropolitan Washington basketball camp with Coach Gallagher. Talk about the philosophy that you as the coach with God being first and your family being second, things of that nature. Talk about that for a second. Well, uh, I think, you know, for a person to be successful in life, whether it be basketball, the classroom, uh, the job they work at, whatever they do, we always say they have to have their priorities in a proper order. And uh, at the math, we like to stress the fact we think God should be first, that your family should be second, school studies that's got to be third and then hopefully basketball will be fourth and we say as long as you keep things in the proper order you're going to probably do pretty well and if you run into some rough spots in your life or maybe things aren't going well we say take a step back and look maybe your priorities have gotten out of whack maybe you made basketball number two for example maybe you made your studies number three or number four maybe you're forgetting your family or your commitments so i think if you have your priorities to proper order that gives you the best chance to be the best you're capable of becoming. Good enough, and a lot of your graduates throughout the years have been the best they can be, and we thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you at the Coldfield House of the City Championship. Thank you, and uh, certainly a great tournament uh, in the Inner High here. Again, a tribute to Sam Jones and, and the entire Inner High basketball. Best luck to you in the city title game. Thank you very much. That's the head coach, Morgan Wooten. We thank him for his time here at halftime. And don't forget, you'll see that game between Dunbar and DeMatha on April 1st, game time is 4.30 right here on DC TV Channel 34. Once again, Morgan Wooten now I guess will take over as one of the deans, if not the dean of high school coaching, and he's just done a tremendous job throughout the year. You talk about all the players that he's had over the years, the Adrian Dantley's, the Hawkeye Whitney's, all with the Dutch Moyes, Adrian Branches, Kenny Cars, you name him, he had them. Yeah, it's been, it's it's been some interesting games uh, between the High and the Capital Leagues. And like I said, the map is probably the winning, is the winning this uh, team between the uh, two leagues. They're probably the winning these teams out of uh, uh, both divisions. Uh, they won more city titles, I believe, than any other school. But look how Dunbar is trying to catch up with them. And it's going to be quite an interesting championship game that's coming up. Well, the map is kind of really... Um, ran ran the Metro Conference portion of the city title game has been Dunbar and Spin Garden from some years and Coolidge for a couple years in there as well. Real quickly before we get to the second half of the ball game, I'd like to tell you that the baseball season is coming up for the inner high and in March the season will start March 15th and everybody's in the league with exception with everybody's in the league for the inner high including Bell Multicultural School Anacostia will play Bell and Anacostia Park. Baloo takes on Cadoza at Fort Preble. Eastern will battle Coolidge at RFK Auxiliary School. 
Auxiliary Field, I should say. McKinley takes on Dunbar. Phelps against Roosevelt at Taft. And Spingarn battles Wilson at Kenilworth. Two big double headers we have to talk about real quickly. Mark your calendars down for April 9th and 10th at RFK Stadium. Not the Auxiliary Field, but RFK Stadium. There will be two double headers of, of baseball. In the first double head on April 9th, 1.30 and 3.30. The 1.30 game will be Wilson taking on Bell Multicultural School. That game will be followed by Eastern against Phelps. That will be on April 9th at RFK. Then on April 10th at the stadium, it will be 1.30, Baloo taking on Spingarn. And then 3.30, Coolidge battles Dunbar. So those are two double headers in baseball coming up at RFK Stadium on April 9th and 10th. And it should be a good opportunity, a big opportunity for the high school kids here in this city to play at RFK Stadium, which is being revamped now for baseball. They're, they're riding the stadium because they want to get a baseball team real badly, a professional baseball team. It's a good opportunity to showcase baseball in the city of Washington. So Coolidge win bound to start the second half. They have Mar uh, Martin Norris back in the ball game. Good to see him back. Number 25, 15 is Edward Williams. Norris had the ball. He loses that to Damon Singletary. The outlet to James Marshall. What a jam. Holy smoke. Well, I knew that was coming. Once the outlet pass came to Marshall, he was off to the races by himself. That young man has really increased his speed. 37-28 our score. This is Edward Williams with the layup. Missed the shot. Rebounded by Singletary. Here comes Romeo Roach. <coughs> Roach driving. Buying James Washington. Washington goes up off the glass. Mr. Shot, Edward Williams claims the rebound. We'll try to set the lineups for you. Martin Norris is 25. Edward Williams for three. Try to draw the contract, but James Marshall claims the rebound. <coughs> Marshall brings it across to Roach. Roach for the jumper. Long rebound. Here comes Adrian Richardson to Edward Williams. Williams goes up. He missed the shot. Goes out of bounds. Stays with Cardozo. 15 is Edward Williams. 25 is Martin Norris, 11 is Cornelius Lasseter, 32 Adrian Richardson, and 40 is Andre Harrison. Well, that was a case he made the wrong decision on the pass. The pass should have been thrown to the other side. That was a man running wide open on the other side. And Romeo Roach is called for his third foul. First team foul in the second half for Dunbar. Dunbar has 12 Romeo Roach, 10 is Damon Singletary, 15 Johnny Rhodes, 21 James Marshall, 31 James Washington. And I was just, I was just about to say I look for uh, Dunbar to turn the heat up because they're a second half team. It looks like they get rejuvenated, strength from somewhere. And a foul, foul called out front this time. Looks like it might have been on, let's see, maybe on Damon Singletary. We'll check that. No, it'll be on James Washington for Washington his first and the second team foul for Dunbar in this half. Well, a couple quick fouls on key people and we could have a different ball game here. This is Martin Norris with the basketball. 6.45 to go in the third quarter. I'm Gary Williams on Seward Robinson and Coach Ken Howe. This is Andre Harrison for the layup. That's the man that's got to get back into this ball game. Seven-point lead now for Dunbar. 37-30. Six and a half to go. Third quarter. This is Roach. Man-to-man -man defense by Cardozo. Singletary to James Marshall. Back up to Johnny Rhodes. Rhodes driving. He'll go up. Rebound out to Martin Norris. Here comes Cardozo. Norris driving all the way, and he gets fouled on the drive. So again, Martin Norris making things happen very well for the Cardozo clerks. Well, he's making racehorse basketball, and he's bringing it down, and that's one way to get the Dunbar big people into foul trouble. Let's keep the coming at him. And Johnny Rhodes called for his third foul, third team foul for Dunbar. James Washington comes out of the game to be replaced by Nathan Langley. So Dunbar are technically playing without a center, although James Washington, James Marshall can do so. Andre Harrison for three. He's into the ball game now. And, and now they have a four-point lead. Six points for Andre Harrison. 37-33 our score. Dunbar's lead is cut to four. Singletary pass the foot out of bounds. Stays with Dunbar. But Cadoz is playing that tough man to man. And like I said, they really believe that they can beat Dunbar. And this is why they're playing so hard. Sad to say, but the team that loses tonight goes home for a couple of days. This is James Marshall. Damon Singletary. Should Dunbar win this game, then Coolidge will go to the consolation game. Should Cadoza win, they have a chance to go to the consolation game. 
This is Singletary. Singletary with a jumper. Over oh, two people and he scores. Yes. Eight points for Damon Singletary. 39-36. Lead back up to six with five and a half to go in a quick third quarter. And a foul call. Let's see. Now a foul call away from the ball. Leroy Swain made the call. And that foul maybe on Romeo Roach. And that's his fourth. And this could be a difference. And we're just saying that a uh, couple of calls made. Uh, key people could be a different ball game. This could be a different ball game. From this point on with Romeo uh, on the bench. So Sean Winfrey. And that's a frustration foul game. too for Baroche. He's away from the basketball, away from the play. This is Williams, I should last who finds Andre Harrison for the layup and the foul's called. Andre is turning the heat up by himself, looks like. Yeah, he's probably saying, give me the ball, I'll make something happen. And that's what he's been doing in Seven. the last two minutes. Seven points in the quarter for Andre Harrison. That foul caught on Sean Winfrey, his second, fifth team foul already for Dunbar. So they're already over the limit. Well, I tell you, Coach Lindsey and his wisdom, he's a sly old fox over there. And he's been playing uh, uh, Romeo Roach from end to end. When he, time he walks off at the bench, he's putting somebody on him, usually Lassiter. And it's been frustrating, Romeo. Back now to a three-point lead, 39-36. Johnny Rose for three. Rebound. Was out of bounds, and it will go to Cadozo. So Cadozo has a chance to cut the lead to one with 5.13 to go in the third quarter. All you see, folks. All you see. This is Andre Harris, the new inbound. Pressure, pride by Dunbar. This is Adrian Richardson. Richardson brings it across. David Williams. Williams for the jumper. Rebounded to James Marshall. Marshall loses the ball and is fouled. And the foul might be called on Martin Norris, number 25 for Cadozo. You know, I thought that uh, Dunbar might come out of the second half uh, with their pressure defense. I was at the game last night when they played spin guard, and what happened, they were uh, only leading about two points at the half, but they came out of the second half and started pressing spin guard and jumped up to a 12 to 15 point lead in about three minutes. For Norris, his first first team foul for Godozo. Foul called inside. Looks like that foul was on Edward Williams. That's on Williams. That's his third. Second team foul for Godozo. Well, this one looks like it's going to go down to the wire with respect to free throw shooting. Well, we're going to see what happens down the road. Double team inside. Oh. A nice shot by Sean Winfrey. And Winfrey with four points on the night. 41-36 our score, 443 to go, third quarter. Well, Dunbar's getting ready to set that press up now. We're going to see whether it uh, works tonight or not. It worked on spin gun last night. Let's see what happens. Andre Harris been working all year long. And the ball goes out of bounds. It that's will go turnover. to Dunbar. Well, that's that octopus defense. All of a sudden, it pops out of the sand, and it's got eight arms. And a timeout looks like it was called by Cadozo. With 4.41 to go in the third quarter, it's Dunbar 41 and Cadozo 36. Well, what we're seeing now is that Harrison has asserted himself and got into the game for Dunbar and brought them, excuse me, Cadoza, and brought them back very close. Plus, we see finally what uh, Coach Lindsay has been doing to Romeo Roach all night finally pay off. He's frustrating Romeo. Uh, Lassiter was playing very close, and Romeo was looking to the official and appealing for a foul uh, down on the other end. Then he comes right back on the other end and, and makes a very flagrant block on the man, uh, drawing the fourth foul. So Coach Lindsay figures that he, if he can frustrate Romeo and sort of, how you say, disrupt the engine, that's what he's trying to do. He's taking out the spark plug. Take a look at the Dunbar Crimson High cheerleaders. Crimson Tide cheerleaders. And the Dunbar will have two representatives in the upcoming Capital Classic on March 27th. Both Johnny Rhodes and Romeo Roach will represent the inner high along with John Stuckey of Coolidge in that ball game. We get a chance. We'll talk about the whole Capital All-Star team. It's a good one from around the area. This is Sean Winfrey. Winfrey finds Damon Singletary. This is Langley to Marshall inside the Rhodes. Rhodes off the glass. It's good. And a foul's call. Well, that's what they generally do when they... Uh, when uh, Romeo gets in trouble, they take the ball down in the paint and put it in uh, John Rose's hand. He's, he makes things happen. John Rose, as well as uh, you have uh, Singletary is also in there. 
he can foul that three-point up too. That foul called on Andre Harrison, his first, third team foul for Cadozo. Johnny Rhodes makes the free throw. Is that press. Three-point play, 11 points in the night for Johnny Rhodes. Turnover. And it's turnover by Johnny Rhodes to James Marshall. 44-36 our score. Marshall finds Nathan Langley for the jumper. Oh, they do it so well, John Ball. And all of a sudden, a 10-point lead. Martin Norris double clutches. Long rebound to Langley. Here comes Dunbar, right. three on two. Marshall all the way. Missed the shot. Two Dunbar players fight for it. Uh -oh. And a foul was called, uh -oh. looks on like. On each other? <laughs> Let's see, the foul. Foul each other? <laughs> Apparently, the foul was called on, on Dunbar. Looks like it was called on Sean Winfrey. Who again, like Coach Al said, looked like we came over his own man. Yeah, he did. I couldn't see him fouling each other. I didn't think that was legal in basketball. You can't foul your own man. For Winfrey, we have three fouls for Sean Winfrey. One-on-one -on -one situation now for Cadoza with four or five to go in the third quarter. Well, Dunbar, they committed in a lot of fouls tonight, and it's a little bit uncharacteristic of them. They play very good defense, but they usually don't commit this number of fouls. Agent Richardson goes to the line. One-on-one -on -one situation with four or five left in the third. And then we mark it, it's, it's 46-36, and so we still only have a 10-point lead by Dunbar. The free throw by Richardson is no good. Rebounded by Nathan Langley. Langley finds James Marshall. Marshall bringing it across. Under four minutes to go. This is Langley. Langley finds... James Berry in the ball game. This is Damon Singletary for the jumper. Count it, Damon Singletary. Well, last year Johnny Rhodes was that unsung person. This year J Damon Singletary definitely is. 12 point lead for Dunbar, 48-36, 3.38 to go. Edward Williams, our Greg Lasseter finds Edward Williams off the glass. Double figures for Edward Williams, 10 points on the night. 48-38, back down to 10. Well, they're keeping it within reach. Coach Lindsay couldn't make a rush to this next half. Quarter. Singletary again. 12 points for Damon Singletary. Six points and a half in a quarter. 50 to 38. This is Martin Norris. Norris brings it up quickly. Three on two. Norris all the way. Terrific ball player. And just think he could have been a Dunbar guard. <laughs> 14 points on the night for Martin Norris. And a foul called outside. Looks like it was on Edward Williams. For Williams, if it is on Williams, that'll be his fourth. No correction, it'll go to Cornelius Lassiter. For Lassiter, his second. 3.02 to go. Fourth team foul for Cadozo. Ten point lead for Dunbar, 50 to 40. Well, Lassiter's been quiet scoring, but he's doing a heck of a defensive job. This is Johnny Rhodes. Rhodes finds James Berry. Berry is fouled. That will send Cadozo over the limit in fouls. So James Berry, he'll go to the line. That foul called on Cornelius Lassiter. So Lassiter quickly has three fouls now. And James Berry will go to the line for Dunbar for a one and one situation. Berry is a 6'4", senior forward. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. It's 50 to 40 as Berry misses the free throw and Martin Norris comes down with the rebound. Norris through traffic again. Stop in the Harrison. Harrison goes up. Shot deflected by Johnny Rhodes, but the foul called on Johnny Rhodes. His fourth. Well, so Johnny Rhodes with four. Romeo Roach with four. And Sean Winfrey with three point three fouls for the Crimson Tide. Again, we we've seen Johnny Rhodes play with four even in overtime. But you're looking at it uh, ten plus minutes, ten minutes and forty one seconds at least left in this ball game. I don't know whether he can play with uh, four with that much time. So Coach McLeese heard me, and he's taking him out. And James Washington will come back into the game for Dunbar. Well, Mark, at two minutes, 11 seconds, Mark, it's 50 to 40, and both Rhodes and Roach it out. Excuse me, 241. Harrison with the free throw, and it's no good. And tomorrow I'm going to see my eye doctor. <laughs> Harrison, two of four from the line. In this ball game, second free throw by Harrison. It's also no good. It comes out to Washington. That they can ill afford to do. Miss free throws down by 10 points. This is Get Langley. 
Langley bringing it across. Wide open to Singletary. Foul line jumper. Count it. Hey, uh, that, that goes back to what I used to always say with your hot, your hot. Keep giving him the ball. Eight points in the quarter for Damon Singletary. 14 for the game. 52 to 40 our score. 2.17 to go in the third quarter. Lassiter finds Harrison off the glass with the rebound claimed by James Berry. He'll give to Singletary. Singletary looking to Berry. Berry double teamed and fouled. Well, this young, young man have to realize that you cannot block every shot. There comes a time you can say boo at some of these guys when they have the ball in certain positions or uh, certain places on the court. And the ball's not going to go in the basket. And that was a good case of it. He's behind the basket trying to make something happen. That's he did. He caused the, foul, let a foul, caused the foul to happen. That foul called on Adrian Richardson, his third. And that'll send James Berry back to the line. Two free throw. First is good. Fifty-three and forty. I score two forty to go. Two and four to go in the third quarter. Second free throw is good by Barry. That make it fifty-four to forty. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. This is Norris. Norris driving all the way. He scores and he's fouled. This Martin Norris with 16 points. He's been Cardoza's spark plug this whole game. And if he keeps doing what he's doing, you know, he may be the MVP. One of the MVPs for this tournament or make all tournament team. That foul called on James Washington, number 31. His, well, they have him for three. We have him for two fouls in the ball game. We'll go what they have. Three fouls for James Washington. So with 1.56 to go, Martin Norris goes to the line. Try to complete the three-point play. His free throw is good. 17 points for Martin Norris. 54-43 our score. 153 and counting in the third quarter. Dunbar has the lead by 11 points. This is James Marshall. And the man with Adrian Richardson. He'll bring it to Singletary. To James Washington. Here's James Berry. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Dunbar. 138 to go. Third quarter. Langley will inbound for Dunbar. Inside pass to, Jane, to James Marshall for the layup. Dunbar finds a way to make baskets in close ball games or when they need a basket. 56-43 our score. Shabba Richardson's no good. Rebounded by James Washington. This is James Berry. Berry brings it across. Finds Damon Singletary to James Marshall. Now James Washington with the basketball, and he is called for an offensive foul. For James Washington, that looks like his fourth foul. Well, 1-10 to go in the third quarter. That was a case where I guess you could say it could have gone either way. So into the game for the first time for Dunbar will be Kenyatta Carmack on number 25. I'm going to go 6'8", Jr. Cardoza inbounds as it was a player control foul, so they won't go to the line. Martin Norris has the basketball to Lasseter for three. Rebounded by James Marshall. Marshall directing traffic. Now he'll drive, and let's see. It'll be a... will be an offensive foul. Let's see. Marshall, look at the foul was called on him. And it will be. Offensive foul on James Marshall, his first. With 54 seconds to go in the third quarter, 56-43 our score. And Cadoza will inbound. That was a case where Marsha should have pulled up and just did a jump stop and made the uh, jumper. Or shot the jumper anyway. So here comes Cadoza. They'll bring it across. 52 seconds left. Hey, until the waning moments of the third quarter. Norris has the basketball. Norris driving through traffic to Lassiter for three. Count it. Cornelius Lassiter. First three-pointer tonight is back to a 10-point lead. 56-46. 32 seconds to go. This is James Berry. Berry looking for someone. Finds Damon Singletary. He's had the hot hand with eight points in this quarter. Loses the ball. Gets it back to Berry. Berry with 18 seconds left. To Marshall. With 15 seconds. Damon Singletary. They had put a 10-second mark. 
Singletary with the jumper. Same spot, same hey, result. Hey, boy, would you hot your hot? Ten points for Damon Singletary, 58-46, three seconds to go. Martin Norris with a jumper, no good at the buzzer. So after three quarters, it's the Dunbar Crimson Tide, 58, the Cadozo Clerks, 46. Well, when you've been around for three years with Mike Wigley, when it's your time to step forward, when the other people in foul trouble, Rhodes and Roach on the bench, uh, Damon Singletary said, okay, here I am. Uh, this is a team. Uh, this is a senior-dominated team. And, hey... This is what they need from me tonight, and this is what they get. Uh, Scoop Marshall no, hasn't kind of committed any fouls, and he's been in there showing that leadership. So when you go through the whole year and you use your entire team, sometimes it pays off. Coach Lindsey's group, they're fighting very hard. They're staying in this ball game. Uh, Harrison and, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the young guard out front, they're playing very well. So it, it's not over. It's just going to be a very, it should be a very fast pace fantastic uh, fourth quarter. So we're good one. While we have a moment, let's go over the Capital Classic team. As we know, the Capital Classic All-Star Game, the 18th annual, will be on March 27th at the Capital Center. We have three inner high representatives in the ball game: Johnny Rhodes and Romeo Rhodes from Dunbar, and John Stuckey from Coolidge. Also on that local team, David Vanderpool out of Blair High School. You got Potomac's guard Rob ne Rob Garner. Good counsels. Nee Nelson Richards, one of the better swing players in the area. West Potomac guard Ava Avis Woods, who we saw last year at Gonzaga. We also have Bert Bart Lamerson from Madison High School. Largo center Don Reed, who's headed to Georgetown. Herndon's forward, Latika Colombo, and the at-large player for the Capital All-Stars is Devin Gray out of St. Francis High School in Baltimore. That's a great high school Capital All-Star team. will be coached by Joe Gallagher in his 44th and final year from St. John's High School. Play on the way in the fourth quarter, and a foul caught underneath. Foul is calling Agent Richardson. Richardson, his fourth. That'll send James Marshall to the line for a one-on-one -one situation. Marshall with 11 points on the night, Johnny Rose with 11, and 16 points for Damon Singletary, 10 in the third quarter. Well, I'm sure Coach McLeese has reminded his players that, fellas, it's crunch time. We've got to make these free throws. We get ready to go to play the map in the city championship. We've got to make those free throws, and that's what Marshall has just done. Marshall with 12 points on the night. He has a second of the one and one Make it 13 points on the night. 60 to 46, 7.48 to go, fourth quarter. I'm Gary Williams, along with C.Y. Robinson and Coach Ken Howe. Martin Norris had best ball and he loses it back court. Martin Norris leading the way for Cadoza and a, let's see, look like maybe a technical foul. Back court. Oh, back court violation. Okay, the whistle blew again, so I thought Leroy Swain might have called a technical. 17 points out of Martin Norris, 10 for Eric Williams, 9 points out of Andre Harrison. That leads to the Godozo scoring. James Marshall all the way, and he scores. 15 points for James Marshall. Scoop should see the patent office about that move, so he's somehow getting through there. I don't think he could have got through there last year with that 260. <laughs> this is three-point attempt is good by Agent Richardson. Gives seven points for Avery Richardson, 62-49, 13-point lead for Dunbar. This is Nathan Langley. His jumper is good. Hey, he comes to play also. When the coach calls on him, all those in 10th grader, he said, Coach, I'm ready. He steps right in and does what the coach asked him to do. Six points for Nathan Langley, 64-49. James Berry called for the foul. And they couldn't stop the Cadozo driving player there. First foul for James Berry. Both teams over the limit. They got to get the ball to Harrison. There's no question about it. He's been quiet now for this last quarter. And when he's popped up in the second quarter scoring six to eight points, they were within four points. They've got to get the ball into his hands. His points seem to be more effective than the others. So Lassiter goes to the line, one-on-one -on -one situation. First is good. 64-50 our score, 14-point lead for Dunbar. Under seven minutes to go, 6.56 exactly. Second free throw on the way for Lasseter. Give him five points on the night. Well, because those are still clawing. Now they set up their press. 64-51 our score. Barry gives to James Marshall. And they bring it across. Marshall finds an opening. Gets cut off there by N Martin Norris. And Kenyatta Carmichael's calling for traveling because he couldn't handle the pass. 645 to go. Fourth quarter. 
Dunbar leads by 13. Martin Norris, pass intended for Norris, but Langley steals it, misses the shot, the follow is no good by Barry, and it's tied up, and it'll go to Cadozo on the alternate possession. Well, you know, although Langley uh, uh, missed that layup, he didn't give up on the basketball. He came right back and tried to get it back, and that's how he got that uh, jump ball. So here comes Cadozo bringing it across. This is Norris. Norris finds Jermaine Gregory. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll go to over to Dunbar. Well, it was a good shot by Gregory, but he should have looked a little bit to his left, and he'd have found uh, Harrison wide open. So inbound play. This is James Marshall. Marshall bringing it across. Marshall drives all the way, but he gets fouled. And it looks like when he was last, he was looking for a foul outside, but he wasn't going to get it. He stayed on the court for a little bit. Well, that's generally when they don't call the foul. When you lie, lie there on the floor instead of getting up, recovered. So James Marshall goes to the line. That foul was called on Jermaine Gregory, his third. Marshall's feet throw is good. 16 points on the night for James Marshall. But well, again, it's crutch time. And this is where you got to make your free throws. This tournament play. Marshall six of eight from the line so far in this ball game. 65-51 our score. Second free throw by Marshall. It's no good, but let's see. Looks like a foul called underneath. Looks like maybe called on Kenyatta Carmichael. Carmichael, yeah. But Carmichael is first. And they go the other way this time for Cadozo player to shoot one and one. Everybody was jockeying for position and Carmichael pushed off to try to get position. This is Lorenzo Roach. He'll place King out of Carmichael. And Adrian Richardson will go to the line this time for one and one. Richardson 0 of 3 from the line in this ball game. Going into the fourth quarter, Cadozo 10 of 20 and officially from the line. Dunbar 15 of 22 going into the fourth quarter. It's Richardson's free throw. It's rebounded by Harrison, and he missed the shot. And the rebound comes down to Lorenzo Roach. 6.15 and counting, fourth quarter. This is Lorenzo Roach. Roach brings it fine, James Berry. Over to Roach. 8.26 minute mark, Roach driving all the way. And the rebound for Andre Harrison, a foul call. The CFL was called on. He goes on 44 for Cadozo. That's Jermaine Gregory. For Gregory, his fourth. Six minutes exactly in the fourth quarter. That's a lot of time. Anything can happen. So Lorenzo Roach goes to the line. One-on-one -on -one situation. First free throw of the evening. His free throw is no good. Rebound by Martin Norris. Martin Norris quickly brings it up. It's a three on two. Norris all the way, and he missed the shot. They fight for it, and Renzo Roach has it, and the foul is called. Let's see. Will be on Norris or will be on Roach? Looks like he might be on Norris as they head the other way. No, it will be actually on... Cornelius Lasseter for no question what the on Cornelius Lasseter his fourth now we'll send Lorenzo Roach to the line so the two number 11's going at it there the foul is called on the Cadozo number 11 that's Cornelius Lasseter his fourth Lorenzo Roach comes back to the line one on one situation here Roach, Lorenzo Roach with three points on the night his free throws no good Adrian Richardson comes down with the rebound here comes Martin Norris. Norris stops, pops. It doesn't drop. Rebound to Andre Harrison. Harrison falling away, and he gets fouled. No, foul called underneath. And that foul say will be called on Lorenzo Roach for Dunbar. And for Lorenzo Roach, his third. And that will send Jermaine Gregory to the line for one-on-one -on -one situation. Look at the Cadozo bench, Henry Lindsay there in the brown sweater there. 
Here's a free throw by Gregory. It's good. Well, Coach McLeese is doing a good job of uh, uh, substituting, and he hasn't come back with Lorenzo Roach yet. With five, four, no, I mean uh, Romeo Roach with 541 left in the game. So he has, he's doing a good job. Second free throw by Richardson as Gregory's no good, but the ball stays with Cadozo on the out of bounds mark. And John Rose is also has also has not come in the ball game yet. So he doesn't need him at this particular point with a 13 point lead. The Cadozo scores. Look for the call timeout. This is Richardson rebounded by Andre Harrison, and again the timeout. Right did. So Richardson has 11 points on the night. 65-54 score. Dunbar leads by 11 with 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter. Don't forget, our next broadcast will be the girls' inter-high championship game between the Coolidge Lady Coats and the H.D. Woodson Lady Warriors. That game you'll see Wednesday night, 8 o'clock on March 13th. Game time, 8 o'clock right here on DCTV Channel 34. And our boys' inter-high final will be one week from today. You'll see Coolidge taking on either Dunbar or Cardozo. Right, right, we know, right, of course, we don't know. Is this game going on Sunday afternoon, game time, 4.30 on March 17th, one week from today. Then still to come, the girls' city town consolation game between the consolation game between H.T. Woodson and Elizabeth Seaton, the championship game between Coolidge and O'Connell. So it should be a great games throughout the girls' city title. Then the boys' city town consolation game, we don't know who either participant will be at this time because we have to decide that from the inner high and of course the DC Public School, I should say the Metro Conference has a game as we take this game tonight between St. John's and Good Council. The winner of that game will be in the Constellation game for the Metro Conference. And of course the boys city title game on April the 1st game time 4.30 right here on DC TV between Dunbar and Damatha. This is Damon Singletary. Singletary looking for someone to find. He finds James Marshall. 5.22 to go, fourth quarter. Dunbar leads by 11, 65 to 54. This is Nathan Langley. Romeo Roach back in the ball game for Dunbar, number 12. This is Singletary. Over to Marshall. Man-to-man -man defense now. This is Johnny Rhodes back in the game. Rhodes finds the baseline, back out to Romeo Roach. He'll bring it back out. No shot clock in high school basketball. Romeo Roach driving, passing to Johnny Rhodes for the ball. Boy, he does so many things well with that basketball. So goes Romeo Rose, so goes Dunbar. 67-54. Dunbar leads by 13. This is Martin Norris. Norris driving. And the pass defended by Damon Singletary, the outlet. This Watch is Romeo Adams. Roach. Roach all the way. Missed the shot. And a foul called. Let's see. People now making the call. Will be on Romeo Roach. If it is, that'll be his fifth. But apparently it's not on Romeo Roach. It'll be on Edward Williams, number 15 for Cadozo, yeah. his fourth. With 4.36 to go in the fourth quarter. So Romeo Roach will go to the line. For a correction, that won't be Romeo Roach. That will be Nathan Langley at the line for one on one situation. Thirty-six to go, fourth quarter. Free throws, no good. Rebound by Andre Harrison. And across finds Martin Norris. Four and a half to go, and a foul call on Damon Singletary. But Singletary just his first foul of the evening. And, and that, you know, these are unnecessary fouls. I mean, they're fouling and they're up by thirteen points. The last thing you want to do is send a Cadoza team to the line, especially when they're hungry. Uh, they're smelling, smelling the uh, NI championship. Tournament championship, that is. Martin Norris goes to the line. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation. 17 points in the night for Martin Norris. Yet to score in this fourth quarter. Here's free throw. It's no good. Rebounded. After Romeo Roach, who saves it, but into the hands of Edward Williams for Cadozo. Williams driving all the way. Rebounded out to James Marshall, but a foul call on James Marshall. For Marshall, his second. You know, I admire Romeo uh, as a point guard. That was a smart move on his part. When he, when he kicked that ball back in, he noticed that he tried to kick it toward his offensive basket, which is very smart. And that, that's hard to teach. So Andre Harrison will go to the line. He's got a one-on-one -on -one free throw attempt coming. 11 points in the night for Harrison. His free throw is no good. Rebounded to Jermaine Gregory. And he'll score in the fouls call. 
That's that's really our first point tonight from Gregory. No? Five points of the night for Gregory. Points. Okay. First point in the second half, though. But my point is, I think it's a little bit below what they need from him. Uh, they need at least 12 to 15 points from from Get Gregory. And Harrison, he's scoring 10 now. He, If he can score 21 points on any given night, they are very, very tough. Langley called for the foul. He gets a the rebound there. Langley has two fouls in the ball game. And Langley's now fouled by Martin Norris, his second. Again, unnecessary fouls at both ends now. All the tip for tat fouls. They still, they still count in the scoring card when they make these, when they make these free throws. Or should I say, if they make these free throws. 4:17 to go, fourth quarter. Dunbar 67 and Cadozo 56. Langley one and one situation here. Free throw is good. Let's see. Maybe been a foul called underneath, and it was indeed a foul called underneath. Looks like on Gregory. And that's on Gregory. That'll be his fifth. So Gregory will leave this ball game. And he scored five points on the night. Coach Lindsey wants to check out what's going on. He didn't understand that one. In fact, that one upset him. Coach Lindsey's really kind of hot down there. Nathan Langley will try to complete the one-on-one -on -one situation here. He made the first. He made the one-on-one -on -one situation, then someone else will go to the line for Dunbar, so that's why everybody's off the line. Because it was a completion of the one-on-one -on -one for Nathan Langley, and then they'll have another one-on-one -on -one situation coming up. Coming up. I, I, you know, I can see why they're doing that, that, that now, because what is happening is, if he, he, well, he happened to make the first free throw. So during the uh, making of the first free throw, there was a foul involved. So to keep the players from having to jump for this particular ball, if he misses it, he takes them off the line, and then he's going to bring them back on the line for the next shooter with the one-on-one. 68-56 our score. See, they all come back to the line now. And it makes sense. I didn't see it at first, but it's very clear to me now. So let's see who goes to the line this time for Dunbar. Looks like it'll be Damon Single. No, let's see. It'll be uh, Johnny Rhodes at the line. So Rhodes will go to the line. He'll have a one-on-one -one situation coming. 69-56 our score. <laughs> Stewart 4-17 to go in the fourth quarter. So now it's another one-on-one -on, -one on the second foul that was that happened during that first free throw that was made. Jermaine Gregory was called for a foul. On the free throw attempt by Nathan Langley on the first free throw attempt of the one and one. It will indeed be Damon Singletary at the line. Yeah. As we're having a hard time deciding here whether it be Singletary Rose, but it will be Singletary. 16 points on the night. He has a one and one coming. Makes the first. Should be five. Was that five fouls on uh, Gregory? Drain Gregory fouled out with that fifth foul on the free throw line. Singletary makes both free throws, 71-56 our score, 4-16 and counting in the fourth quarter. Believe me, those hurt. Those fouls really hurt Cardoso. Smart and Norris, you'll find it with Williams. Pass inside, intended for Deion Savage, but it goes out of bounds, and it will go to Dunbar. Deion Savage, number 35 in the game for the Clerks. Savage, a 6-3 senior. Here comes Johnny Rhodes bringing it across, heading toward the four-minute mark. Singletary back to Rhodes. Rhodes finds Nathan Langley off the glass. The basket's good, and a foul called away from the ball. Well, well it looks like, looks like to me, uh, Cardoza got to push off Blues now. Like every shot that's being made, they're pushing somebody off, trying to get the rebound. That foul called on Deion, uh, correction, that foul called on Deion Savage. The Savage is first, number 35 for Cardoza. And James Marshall goes to the line. You have a one-on-one -on -one situation here. The basket counts by Nathan Langley. That yeah, was a different player. As a rebound off the missed free throw by Marshall. And Langley's called for the foul, his third, with 3.58 to go in the fourth quarter. So a lot of free throws being shot here in the last quarter of this game in regulation. But you know Dunbar has so many weapons. 
This is what uh, Coach Morgan Wood was talking about in the, during the interview, Gary. He said Dunbar has a lot of depth, and so does the map. So th these are the types of things that are going to carry over into uh, building, the build-up of one of the uh, probably largest crowds that will see our city, our city our title game. Well, you can't ask for a better matchup in that ball game because you have the number one ranked team in the area, Damatha, against the number two ranked team in the area, Dunbar. And in the national poll, USA Today poll, Dunbar is actually ranked ahead of Damatha. Damatha is at 24, and Dunbar is ranked 19th in the nation. So it's going to be a very interesting ball game. We'll have it for you on April the 1st, game time, 4.30. 73-58 our score, 343 to go in the fourth quarter. Dunbar with the lead by 15. This is Langley's. They spread the floor. They're working their keep away game. And this might be a big important thing when they get over to Cole Fieldhouse. This is Roach. Roach driving. Brings it right back out. No shot clock in high school basketball. This is Roach. Don't get five seconds. We don't get rid of it. Roach falls, but he gives it to Nathan <laughs> Langley. 3.17 to go. Johnny Rhodes brings it right back out. They're going to lull him to sleep, though. Look for our loop somewhere. Michael McLeese applauding his ball club there. 24 and 3 on the season. The Dunbar Crimson Tide. This is single Roach to Langley. Back out to Marshall. Marshall and Norris collide. The ball goes out of bounds. Stays with Dunbar. Well, this is good on their part because they really don't need another shot. Up by 15 points. They need to work on their keep away game. This is Rhodes. Stall and score, what you, whatever you want to call it. Rhodes brings it right back out. This is single Terry. And Singletary is fouled by Martin Norris. For Norris, his third. One-on-one -on -one situation with Damon Singletary. Well, that's a good foul on Norris's part. He's trying to he's trying to get the ball if he can, but uh, he wants them to send them to the line so they can get possession. 18 points for Damon Singletary, 12 in this half. As Singletary's hot shooting that third quarter, really got Dunbar out to this big lead. His free throw is good. Well, he's a quality guard. He's a, he's a solid solid citizen on the team also. He, he's a, a big leader out there. 74-58 our score. 2.49 to go. Second free throw is no good. Rebound by Andre Harrison. This is Norris. Norris finds Cornelius Lasseter for three. Rebound to Williams. Williams drives the baseline and let him go, and he scores. Hey, Williams has 12 points in the night. 74-60 our score. Two and a half to go. This is Singletary to Romeo Roach. No, bring it right back out. Working that clock. There's not very much Cardoza can do. This is Singletary. So it looks like Dunbar will face Coolidge in the Inner High Tournament Championship game. And Inner High and Coolidge will be the, I should say Dunbar and Coolidge will be the Inner High representatives in the city title games. Dunbar will play the Matha and Coolidge will play either St. John's or Good Counsel. This is Johnny Rhodes for the layup. That's what I mean by they have so many weapons. They allow you to sleep, and before you know it, there's a layup in your back door. 15 points for Johnny Rhodes, 76 to 60 our score. It's a 16-point lead with 152 to go. This is Martin Norris. Norris off glass. He goes up, missed the shot. Rebound followed by Deion Savage. So Savage's first field goal makes it 76-62. Roman Roach brings it across. Roach driving, but goes back out, and a traveling violation called against Romeo Roach. So 137 to go. Dunbar leads by 14. It says that was Williams. Williams is fouled by Nathan Langley. But Langley, his fourth. So it's a foul you don't really need in that situation, Coach Al. No, you don't, because uh, you're up by 14 points, one minute, 33 seconds ago. Last thing you want to do is foul somebody. Stop the clock. Not only do you stop the clock, but you put them on the foul line which can help them make points. Cut the lead. This is Lasseter for one and one. Free throw is no good, rebound, fought for. Deion Savage has it, he misses it. In the hands of Harrison, Harrison's fouled by James Marshall. Marshall, his third. So Andre Harrison goes to the line. Harrison three of five from the line. He will have two shots coming here. Harrison has 13 points on the night. 129 to go, fourth quarter. Harrison's free throw is good. Well, tomorrow night I expect this gym to be pretty packed. Uh, 
It won't fill it up, but it would be a much larger crowd for this championship game, I'm sure. Come Second on. free throw is good by Harrison. 76-64, 129 to go. Ought to be interesting because Dunbar will be the home team because they're the highest seed as Andre Harrison is called for the foul. But Coolidge will be playing in their home gym. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Dunbar will probably be known as the designated home team, again, because they had the highest seed in the tournament. That's but cool. Coolidge will have a lot of the home support with them in this ball game coming up. And you'll see that game one week from today here on DC TV Channel 34. That was the point I was getting ready to make, Gary, about that, about Coolidge being on their own home court. They should bring all the crowd from in this area. Damon Singletary hits the free throw. And the tournament uh, draw has created, you know, two different things on the boys and the girls' side. On the on this side of here and the boys, we have an all-west, excuse me, all-west matchup. And for the boy, uh, the girls, we have an east and the west matchup in the championship game. This is Lassiter for the three-pointer. It doesn't go. Rebound outlet to Johnny Rhodes. Rhodes all by himself with, should say, Lassiter, and ball falls in there. 17 points in the night for Johnny Rhodes. 80 to 64 our score. She posted a one-minute mark in this ball game. Well, the duck tail on what C-Roy uh, said. You know, when you look at it, though, we had the best team. I see, feel that you had the best team playing in these uh, in these championships, and that's where it should be. Andre Harrison shot deflected by James Marshall. 57 seconds to go, fourth quarter. 80 to 64 our score. The Dozier inbounds, and there'll be a substitution. Donald Gaither into the game. He will replace Scoop Marshall. So James Marshall has 15 points on the night. And Gaither will replace him. Our hoop attempt by Andre Harrison falls short and Romeo Roach has the rebound. Going to take the air out of the ball though. 50 seconds to go. Romeo Roach against Martin Norris. And Norris is called for the foul. His fourth. Romeo Roach goes to the line. The time on the bench seemed to help Romeo because he was very much frustrated the first part of the game, the first half, because they were shadowing him. The, the minute he moved, Lassiter was right in his hip pocket. 48 seconds left. Roach goes to the line. One-on-one -on -one situation. Roach, Romeo Roach had just three points on the night. Coming off a three-point in the first quarter. Roach's free throw. is no good. Rebound. Fought for Johnny Rhodes has it. He's fouled. That might be on Andre Harrison, number 40 for Cadozo. For Harrison, his third. That will send Johnny Rhodes to the line. Well, Andre's had a pretty decent ball game, but he's not the kind of ball game that they need to win. If he could score 21 to 25 points, it would be a different ball game for them. Number 14, James Coclaw into the game for the first time, a six-foot junior, and he will replace Damon Singletary, who has 21 points. Well, Johnny Rhodes makes the first free throw. Well, that's good. Uh, Coach McLeese is... Uh, let this ball players, all of them get a chance to play, which is good, and it's a motivator. This, these young men be ready and fired up to play on next year because Dumbo only have about four seniors, four or five seniors, I believe, on this team at that minute. So they'll be Rose's, ready to play for Coach McLeese on next season. Rhodes' second free throw is also good. Jermaine Clark checks into the game, replacing Rhodes. Rhodes has 19 points. 46 seconds left, 82 to 64. It's an 18-point lead for Dunbar. This is Martin Norris for three. Count it. Well, I am impressed with that junior, man. He'll be back next year, and I'm sure Coach Lenz will be glad to have him back on his team. 20 points for Martin Norris. 82-67, 30 seconds to go. Romeo Roach coming it across. Roach finds an opening. He'll bring it right back out with 22 seconds. Langley oh, gets goodness. taken down that by hurt. Edward Williams by accident. Uh, back away, Langley. Sort of fell hard on his back, and he's going to stay down yeah. there now. Definitely accidental by Edward Williams as they both went up for the basketball. Yeah, but and Langley just caught in the wrong position, and he gets taken yeah. down. Yeah, that, that hurt. That, that probably sounded like his elbow hit that floor. But uh, Langley did a smart thing, although he's a tenth grade. He came to the basketball, and that's another thing that's hard to teach. That foul call on Edward Williams, number 15, his fifth foul, and he'll leave the ball game with 12 points on the night. And he's a tough young 10th grader and he says nobody's gonna shoot those free throws with me tonight. <laughs> 10 points for Nathan Langley. One-on-one situation for Langley. Langley's four or five from the line in this ball game. 18 seconds left, Dunbar 82, 
And Cadozo 67. We'll find out whether he's hurt or not. His free throw is good. Doesn't look like he's hurt, dog, uh, Garrett all. <laughs> he's doing a fine job. Romeo Roach will lead the ball game. He is replaced by his brother, Lorenzo Roach. Frustrating night for Ron Romeo, but he'll be back, and he'll be back strong. There's no question about that. The second free throw by Langley is also good. Langley will lead the ball game. We replaced by Sean Winfrey. Eighty-four, sixty-seven, eighteen seconds to go. It says Lassiter for three. Rebound long. Martin Norris almost had it, but it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Dunbar with 11 seconds. So it'll be Dunbar and Coolidge in our next Boys in the High Championship game, the Boys in the High Tournament, next Sunday afternoon, game time, 4.30. Well, Gary, at the beginning of the season, it's been a, it seems like it's been a long time since we started. Uh, a good two months. Uh, we could have wrote that down and had this to happen. But you have to play out the season and you have to play the tournament to get to this point. And the young, all the young men in the inner high, they've ex deported themselves so well all year long, giving us so many, so many hours of fun and thrills. Uh, I can't say enough. I remind everyone that all these young men are student athletes, and they make the grades first, and then they come to play basketball and football and all the other sports that you see. So uh, we would hope that uh, that inner high will continue. It's, it's a great tradition and it's such a pleasure to bring these kinds of games to you. You know, the whole thing I regret uh, as I'm, as we uh, do these games, uh, especially the tournament playoff, is that these young men uh, will not get a chance to play those that have lost uh, tonight, will not get a chance to play a consolation game because that could be uh, uh, as uh, Coach Briscoe said early in our last telecast that that particular uh, uh, games or these games, consolation game, could possibly be the game that get these young men scholarships. And, and it's just sad that this did not materialize, but, you know, it came from the athletic department and we have to just deal with it the way it comes in to us. So here are your scoring totals in the ball game. First for Cadozo, five points unofficially, five points out of Cornelius Lasseter, 12 points for Edward Williams, one for Donald Struthers, 20 points out of Martin Norris, Two for De Deion Savage, 15 Andre Harrison, 7 Adrian Richardson, and 5 for Jermaine Gregory. For Dunbar, 21 points out of Damon Singletary, 3 for Lorenzo Roach, 3 for Romeo Roach, 17 points for Johnny Rhodes, 16 out of James Marshall, 12 for Nathan Langley, 4 for James Washington. So your final score once again, the Dunbar Crimson Tide, 84, and the Cadozo Clerks, 67. Take a look at John Thompson, head coach of Georgetown here tonight, watching the inner high basketball. Oh, maybe one time he'll get some of these players in the inner high. He's got a player coming out of Largo Senior High School, Don Reed, 6'9 center, who's a very talented player, and you'll see him in the upcoming Capital Classic on March the 27th. Along with our own Rhodes and Roach, so it should be a good game. Uh, all, as always, the uh, D.C. contingent gives the uh, national team all it can handle. And John Stuckey also on the team for the Capital Classic All-Stars out of Coolidge. And in that last year's ball game, Michael Smith was the co-MVP along with Grand Hill, who's now at Duke University. And Michael Smith set the scoring record for the Capital Classic, 33 points on the night. He had a great ball game in that contest. Well, there's no question about what Mike Smith can do. We watched him for, for three years here playing for Dunbar. And, of course, right now you, we've got to realize that Dunbar is going for a three-peat. Uh, this is this is their they will be going for their third straight city title and that's I believe unprecedented. I don't think anybody's done it. Last team to do it twice was the uh, Old Blue Clubs with Frank Bolden on on in the uh, 50s. Last team to, to do it twice for the inner high and uh, Dunbar does it twice did it twice last year going for the third straight title. So the inner high tournament finals are set. And Wednesday night, game time, 8 o'clock, you'll see the girls in a high championship between Coolidge and H.D. Woodson. Coolidge has already earned the right to go to the city title game at Catholic University. They will play O'Connell Lady Knights in that ball game. You'll see that game coming up on March the 24th. And in the boys' tournament championship, will be Dunbar taking on Coolidge. Dunbar will play in the city title game against the Mather. Coolidge will play against the 
winner of either St. John's or Good Counsel. So you got two great teams going in. Of course, St. John's coached by John uh, Joe Gallagher in his 44th and final year. They've got a great player by the name of Warren Williams. Meanwhile, Good Counsel has two talented players, and Nee Nelson Richards, who will be in the Capitol Classic, as well as Kurt Small, the guard out there. They have a great outside-inside tandem for the Good Counsel Falcons. Well, the Metro Conference always puts on a very representative group uh, on the floor, and of course, they anyhow, they match up very well. Uh, when we see these ball games, uh, last year we enjoyed a sweep, and we, we make light of that and we make fun of that because it makes us feel good to to realize that our program stacks up that well. Uh, we really don't. We really don't. Excuse me. We don't really don't care that much about it being a sweep, but we just like to have that kind of fun. So uh, we hope everybody understands when we say that. Let's just give some special congratulations to the Coolidge basketball program, who have now put two people in the city title situation. The Coolidge boys will be in the consolation game against either St. John's Good Council. The Coolidge girls will be in the championship game against O'Connell. So well done by both Jarrell Robinson, the boys coach, and McClinton Brown, the girls coach. Did a great job this year. Well, the success and failure of any organization starts from the top. And let's go a little bit higher than that. Let's speak very highly of the principal, Jennifer Gibbs, and for the athletic director, uh, Adrian uh, Dixon at this time. So I tell you, they've done a great, great job. Uh, we can go on the other side of the ledger course and say that about the Dunbar and the Woodson program. So just tremendous programs about the inner high. You've seen that throughout our season. We have some great games for you. And it's still to come with the inner high tournament championships, the girls and boys city title game, and, of course, the D.C. coaches all-star games in the remaining from McKinley High School. So we still got some great games coming up here on our broadcast here from Turning Point Video Productions coverage of inter high basketball. So your final score once again, Dunbar 84 and Cadozo 67. We'll have some interviews and wrap this game up from the Frank Williams Activity Center at Coolidge High School in a few moments. Stay with us. So the Dunbar Crimson Tide advanced to their third straight tournament final. They're looking for the third straight tournament championship. They beat the Cadozo Clerks here tonight at Coolidge Senior High School. I'm Gary Williams, along with Seward Robinson, staying with us, the head coach of the Dunbar Crimson Tide, Michael McLeese. And coach, the first half, especially in the foul situation, what was the situation with the fouls as far as uh, the over-anxious of the defense, or what was it? I, I don't know if it was over-anxious. I thought a couple times we did some reaching instead of moving our feet. Uh, we got some tough calls that, you know, I, I kind of thought could have been a no-call, but uh, the referees called, and we had to work around that. So, uh, you know, that's part of the ball game. Close game until the, basically the third quarter when Damon Singletary got hot, especially in the foul line situation. Yeah, Damon um, stepped up like a senior supposed to. I thought he played extremely well. Um, we, Like you said, we had some foul situation, and he came on real strong, and, and Scoop Marshall did a, did an outstanding job. Uh, we had Scoop running the point, and, and I thought he did a good job settling us down and, and, and getting some easy shots for us. Is that an interesting transition? Have you done that before with James Marshall before, running him at the point? Well, we kicked it around a bit in practice. You know, you try to prepare yourself for any situation, uh, we feel comfortable with him handling the basketball, but it takes away from our rebounding strength. So we, we like him in the paint, but when we get in that situation where everybody was going down and, and, and some of my younger players, uh, I thought, had some untimely turnovers, so I turned it over to him. I thought you had a good game out of James Washington tonight, someone who's quiet in the ball club, but as C.Y. said in our broadcast, he started for your ball club for three years. Exactly right, and I told him to, uh, today uh, at school, I said, I need a big ball game from you tonight, and, and he responded. Um, he is a senior, he's been with us starting for three years, and, and I thought he had probably his best game in three years tonight. He did a lot of quiet things, uh, controlled the boards, and, and, and set the tempo right away. I thought he played extremely well. Let's go over to C.Y. Robinson. C.Y.? Well, Coach, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to do something that probably no NAI coach has had to do, and that's to go to three straight uh, title games and win three straight. Well, I, I hope you're right <laughs> that, that we will win uh, three straight, but, but you're right. We're looking forward to that, and um, it's an opportunity for our sophomores who, I'm sorry, for our seniors who have been with us for three years to go out as probably uh, the only group that have done that in three, three consecutive years. Well, I was hoping to spring a surprise here, but already your sharp eyes caught something, uh, caught Morgan Wooden upstairs talking to us at halftime, and he did say a few things. One of the things he said, though, was that uh, he, he respected you and your program uh, very much, and I uh, conveyed something that I learned from you in the preseason, that uh, playing Morgan Wooden was one of the highlights of your, of your career. 
He uh, says he thinks the tempo is going to be the important thing in the city title game. Uh, I think he's right, and, and, and we like to create tempo. Uh, we feel if we can play at our tempo that we're going to have a, a fairly high success rate. But um, if, it, if it's at his pace, which I think it kind of got that way last year, uh, we'll settle down and do what we have to do. We, we, we feel like we can play every aspect of the game, but it's going to be tough there. Well, uh, coach team very well disciplined, and, and they've been there before, and uh, we're going to have our hands full. Well, I'm going to turn it back over to Gary now, and uh, good luck in the championship game. Thanks, Zero. Exactly. Best of luck in the tournament game against the coach. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. Okay, that's it. Dunbar head coach, Michael McLeese. We're joined now by the head coach of the Cadozo Clerks, Henry Lindsay. And coach, uh, first of all, you got some great performances tonight from Martin Norris and uh, Andre Harrison in losing cross, I thought. Well, Martin and, and Andre are good ball players. Uh, Martin, Andre's been consistent most of the year. Martin just played us the second half. Um, to go into tonight's game, I knew that we had to have a super effort to beat Dunbar. Dunbar's an excellent ball club, and I hope they represent us well in the high in the East in the City Championship on Sunday. I thought I thought Martin in the early early year we saw you against H.T. Woodson and then against Dunbar the first time around and tonight. My, my opinion, I thought uh, Martin Norris makes your team a little bit quicker because he brings that ball up so quickly. Well, with him, I think we lost about five games this year. I think had I had him, we would definitely won. Like, we lost about four points in one game, a couple points in one another one. And, like, uh, the first ten games, we played without a point guard. And with Martin, we can do more things defensively because he's quicker, and we can do more things offensively. He is an excellent ball handler, and that's what we were missing the first half of the season, and that's what hurt us this year, the early part of the year. Talk about the game plan for tonight's ball game. What would you, what were you trying to do against the Crimson Tide tonight? Well, basically, we were players. We were trying to play aggressive man-to-man -man defense, and we sort of got our way from that. And uh, the biggest thing that hurt us tonight was the lack of depth. Uh, we really didn't have the bench strength to go through that would play on the caliber player that we really need to, to beat a Dunbar team. Let's go now, Coach Ken Howe. Coach. Uh, Coach Lindsay, uh, congratulations on a uh, fine season. You made a remarkable comeback, especially in the second half. Uh, what I wanted to ask you was this. Uh, what, what do you look forward uh, for next year? Uh, how many seniors do you have uh, graduating, and uh, how many players do you have returning for next year? Well, next year, Kenny, we're looking forward to have a good season. I'm losing five players, but three of them are starters, but I will be returning to Martin, uh, one Greg Jones, Cooksey Hunter, and Jermaine Gregory will be returning next year. So I'm looking forward to have a good season uh, next year. If I can get the uh, some junior high school kids to come into Cadoza, uh, people seem to want to put a bad name on Cadoza, which is nothing wrong with the school, but uh, if we could get some our share of the ball players in the, in the junior high league, we'll be okay next year. Okay, back to you again. Real quickly, Coach, talk about the Junior High School Championship. We just saw the Junior High School Championship here on DCTV. Talk about the talent that's in the Junior High Schools this year. Well, from what I've heard, I haven't seen too many players. I managed to see uh, Dale and Langley play, but I understand there's some tremendous ball players at Dale. I know there's some good kids at Langley. Elliot has some good ball players, and there's a couple of good kids at Paul. So there's some good ball players in the in a league. The problem is going to be is hopefully they don't all go to the same school. Uh, I would like to love to get all the kids that are, that are supposed to come to Cadoza, and, you know, I'll let me deal with that from that angle. Good enough. Well, best luck to you next season. Okay. Thank you for joining us. All right. And head coach Henry Lindsay of Cadozo. So Dunbar will advance to the championship game of the Inter High Tournament, and they'll take on the Coolidge coach in our next broadcast. I'm Gary Williams, along with Seward Robinson and Coach Ken Howe. Your final score here from Coolidge, the Dunbar Crimson Tie, 84, and the, Co the Cadozo Clerks, 67. Let's go over scoring totals real quickly. First for Cadozo, five points out of Gregory Jones. I should say five points out of Canadian Lasseter, 12 points out of Edward Williams, one for Donald Struthers. High score for the Clerks was Martin Norris with 20 points, the Dunbar transfer. Two points out of Deion Savage, 15 points Andre Harrison, seven points out of Adrian Richardson, and five points for Jermaine Gregory. For Dunbar, 21 points out of Damon Singletary. He was a high score for the Crimson Tide. Three points for Lorenzo Roach. Three for Romeo Roach. 17 points for Johnny Rhodes. 16 out of James Marshall. 12 for Nathan Langley. And four for James Washington. So it will set up a nice tournament championship between Dunbar and Coolidge. And Coach Howe, the Coolidge coach has a big task ahead of them, especially at the, at the guard position, going up against Ro Roach and Singletary. You're exactly right, and uh, Coolidge is going to have to come to play. The last time we had those two teams together, Coolidge gave Dunbar everything they wanted in uh, Dunbar's gym. So it should be an interesting ball game. John Stuckey is going to have to come to play, and they're going to have to box out and get rebounds. And if they can do those things well, it could be a close ball game uh, tomorrow night. Actually, two of the guards for 
throws uh, the Cougars had great ball games in that contest. Talking about Kobe Taylor and Jason Wiley, so it could be a great ball game. Yeah, well, you know, we talk about Kobe Taylor. We're talking about one of the tallest guards in Anaheim. He passes well. He shoots well. He dribbles well, and he can do a lot of things. And he can post up a Romeo Roach, who's only about five four, I believe, and he can do a good job. But they have to figure that out for themselves. It'll be a big matchup between two of the players in the Capital Classic All-Star game. We're talking about John Stuckey for Coolidge and Johnny Rhodes for Dunbar, see, right? Yes, both of them great leapers. Uh, I'm sure that uh, when they get into this ball game, uh, the pride will be on the line. Uh, both young men have a lot to prove. Uh, both are going to be into the, into the Capital Classic. Uh, Stuckey, he was, of course, a standout dunker from last year. So... There'll be a lot of a lot going for each uh, each young man in in that matchup. However, it, it, it won't all be Stucky and Rhodes. Uh, Dunbar is a, a role-oriented team. Everyone has a job to do. We saw, uh, uh, excuse me, Nathan Langley come in and do his job very well. Uh, Sean Winfrey comes in and does does his job. And even uh, the younger Rhodes, Lorenzo, comes off and he spells his brother uh, to give them time. Tonight they they did a uh, they stayed a long time without Rhodes and Roach in the ball game. Yet they were able to hold their own in some cases pull away. That game will be one week from today here on March 17th. Game time is 4.30 right here on DC TV. But before we get to that game, we'll have the girls tournament championship final between Coolidge and H.D. Woods. And that should be a great matchup here. You're exactly right. And I'm looking forward to that game also. You have uh, Miss Jones, who's the uh, guard for uh, Woodson. Then you also have uh, Camille, Camille Smith, isn't it? Camille Smith, yeah, who's an excellent leap. We had a super game against uh, Christ the King on defense, although she was, wasn't was up to par as she might have wanted to be on offense. She did a fine job. And then when you look at uh, Coolidge, you cannot uh, miss the young lady, uh, Alfreda, I believe it was her Jefferson, yeah, the point guard, who can handle the ball very well, and she does many things well with the basketball, not only shooting, but she can pass it very well. It should be one of the big matchups in the ball game. Alfreda Jefferson for Coolidge and Kiana Oliver from H.D. Woodson at the point guard position. Yes, Kiana Oliver held on very well against Deborah Henry. And uh, again, Henry and, and Jefferson are of the same type. Both very quick on defense, and if you put the ball on the floor wrong, you're liable not to be able to pick it up again because they're gone with it. Uh, Oliver, she's up to the task. Uh, she has played very well all year, and she's got some big people to go with it. I think that if Woodson, Woodson has more incentive in this game. Uh, we know that. Woodson, they have to prove that they can beat Coolidge, and they want to prove that very badly. Coolidge will have the opportunity to go to the city title game and play O'Connell. So I don't, just as we saw tonight, I don't think that their motivation will, uh, will be all there. So that might be just the edge that Woodson needs. Two of the players that may have to have good ball games for H.D. Woods will be Jameel Elliott and Dawn Stewart, the third and fourth leading scorers in the inner high. Well, Elliott and Stewart, they are products of a Roper Junior High School tradition, which we just saw just recently win three cha straight Junior High School championships. So they know how to win. They know how to play in the championship games, and they were there last year. So we can. They, they know what it's all about. They very much wanted to get to this game and have it mean everything, but it doesn't. So they, they want to just prove that we're the best team, and they're going to try to stick it to Coolidge. Last time these two teams met, Coolidge won by one point. So it should be a great one. That'll be our next telecast on Wednesday night, March 13th, game time, 8 o'clock, the girls in the high tournament championship between Coolidge and H.D. Woodson. And then one week from today, the boys tournament championship, Dunbar taking on Coolidge. So that's it. Your final score here from, Dun from Coolidge Senior High School, it's the Dunbar Crimson Tide, 84, and the Cadozo Clerk, 67. It'll be Dunbar and Coolidge in the boys tournament final. For Seward Robinson and Coach Ken Howe, I'm Gary Williams saying so long from Coolidge Senior High School. We'll see the girls tournament championship Coolidge and Woodson, followed by the boys tournament championship Dunbar and Coolidge. Until then, have a very pleasant and good night, everyone.